can everyone give a round of applause to everyone? I don't know how you all feel, but I feel tremendously empowered from this weekend. I find it absolutely wonderful. Um, I, I, there's no need to say any more because I think everyone's feeling similar feelings. Just one little thing, which I, a word that has cropped up from time to time over this weekend, I'm going to thank Patrick um, for this word, is one of, one of the things that I've felt about this weekend is that there's been an enchantment. Um, and that enchantment, as exactly as Patrick described in his paper, is about finding oneself within a song or finding oneself within a narrative. Um, I found that to be a very present, daimonic feeling over this weekend. Um, and so, thank you to everyone. In particular, just before you, you say anything, I'm Angela. Thank you to Angela. Thank you very much for all of the, the help that we've had from Jeffrey and Maggie um, and Cameron and Dwayne uh, for chairing the papers. I haven't missed anyone in, in chairing. Have I? No. But thank you very much for chairing the papers. <laughs> thank you very much for our keynote speakers. Um, thank you, Marguerite. Thank you, Marie. And thank you, Ronald, who's not here now. Um, for wonderful, wonderful sessions. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think the biggest thanks of all, but I sound like a, I sound like I just won an Oscar. <laughs> um, I think the biggest thanks of all, and I really mean this, is to Lindsay and to Verit. Verit, are you here? Yes. Stand up. Stand up, please. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you would like 
have an email list of everybody so that everyone can keep in contact and also create some kind of e forum. If anyone doesn't want to be on the list, please let me know, otherwise I'll just I will say so and so didn't want to be on the list. And um, I'll, we will be putting as many talks as we can up on the designated website, either you know, copies of actual talks or podcasts or videos, so we will let everyone know when they're accessible. And we should try and keep as a community, but a unique community or, you know, it's not difficult to organise a conference, even though we're stressed and exhausted. It's not difficult. We didn't actually have to spend a lot of money, we managed to get a bit of I was in Spain for three weeks. He's so away. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's relaxing. <laughs> so, you know, we can generate gatherings like this to add little PowerPoints or something. And that's very important. Would anyone like to say anything? Um, yeah, I think that's all I've got. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Could we thank William as well? Oh, yeah. 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 sadness and then talk about happiness and this is the fitting of the emotions that I went through with this conference is that yes there is a lot of people a lot of momentous to pursue a kind of a seeking knowledge combining the both worlds and the both eyes that you, you were referring to the sad things is the lack of support that that we get um, but the, the good thing is that there there is that community and, and from the papers I noticed that there were a lot of themes that we all shared in common but from different disciplines, and that was that was quite cheerful. But also, I was I was I was thinking of the history of knowledge and history of the ways that that, that people pursued knowledge and even the traditional ways of doing things, even the re traditional research methods. They started historically speaking. They started as enthusiasm and, and the self-seeking ways. Um, to pursue certain kinds of knowledge, whether it was scientific knowledge or all kinds. It's just what was lost in the process of institutionalizing this method was the spirit, was the dialogue. Mm -hmm. Is that they're both valid ways. It's not about tradition versus uh, non-conformist way of, of research. It's not the polarities, it's just the spirit. We need that spirit back. Unfortunately, ec economics and all all kind of drudgery just went into the way, even of the tradition, what we call now traditional research methods and the way that we, we receive our knowledge. But it's all about the spirit after all. And this is what the, I think, what the conference was all about. Can I just add one little bit? I don't want to, I don't want to make this. Um, based on the conversation I was having with, uh, with Marguerite and Mike over lunch, um, and it's based upon uh, three years that we gathering um, as the Myth Centre, and I know a number of years before, and before others uh, in, that, in that particular group, um, and one of the ways to conceptualise so many of these avenues of inquiry is articulated, as I said earlier to uh, Mike and Marguerite, is if you can actually hold without losing your sanity the answer to a question, is it A or is it B, and the answer is yes. <laughs> if you are able to hold that answer, and this certainly, I, I, I derived that in fact from Jeffrey, um, um, who had that wonderful question of a, of a Chinaman who was asked, is he, Confucianist? Is, is, he Confucianist? is he Confucianist or is he Taoist? And his answer was yes. <laughs> um, now, if you can actually, now, this is part of the articulation of the paradox the paradox of, of, of expression, the paradox of, of, of genuine feeling and genuine experience that cannot be articulated necessarily in a rigid binary, yes or no, black or white, one or two, up or down, left or right. And this is what so much of the conversations that have been taking place this weekend have been about, have been about articulating something that is in itself hard to articulate. Now this, of course, is one of the reasons why there's a whole mode of expression which is always going to be slightly problematic within the university environment because the university environment demands, is it black or is it white? Is it science or is it art? Is it, is it up or is it down? And therefore, if you can actually say, is it up or is it down? You answer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I think, what we need to sort of hold on to. Anyway. <laughs> oh, 
yes, yes, sorry, um, um, we've got table books. Oh, yes. Sorry, there we are. Um, that's, that's important. <laughs> In the book of Bacon, I don't know, some of you may have um, strolled across there to get better coffee. Um, or some <laughs> coffee. Uh, and there is some <laughs> over the weekend. Um, we've a table book there for but it is a bar, so we can just rock on up whenever we like. Um, we thought it was probably sensible to have a table put there rather than to float into town on a Saturday night, which might be difficult to get a table. We can basically, as many as are here, I book a table for 25 people, um, but as many people as one can eat or drink there. The table's booked for eight, but we can go across there whenever anyone likes. Um, and that's, that'd be nice. Okay, so the very, very final sound will essentially be the sound of the bell ringing. Well, people, I very much greatly enjoyed this, this, this conference. I met a lot of lovely people and, uh, with, with uh, similar um, interests and passions. And it's been absolutely great. So I wanted to give a little gift back in terms of things which weren't words. Um, um.